Hi, my name is Preston Goings. I am the author of the book, A Guidebook for Surviving and Breaking Free from Being Homeless. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you figure out why. Mark Twain. Tag a friend, homeless to home. All sales proceeds from this book are donated to www.tagafriend.today. Authored by me, Preston A. Goings. Illustrated by Kayla Kaiser. Edited by Michael Williams. Acknowledgements. I want to thank the employment specialist that allowed me to interview her for the purpose of gathering accurate information. I also want to thank the staff of WorkSource of Washington State for helping me gather information to assist homeless people worldwide particularly in Washington State with this book. I also want to thank Lake Washington, UMC in Kirkland, Washington, for providing me with some helpful information on their safe parking program. Chapter 1. The Four Types of Homelessness and How to Get Help for Each Type. Transitional homelessness means a state of homelessness that's a result of a major life change or catastrophic event. Most everyone in the world has had a catastrophic event or a major life change in their lives. For some people, their life changes or catastrophic events were more tragic than others. Major events could include a loss of employment, losing a loved one, a pandemic, or recreational drug use that leads to addiction. And now they're on the streets homeless. You could have been working very hard every day and then you got asked to come to the office and gotten laid off because you weren't good enough for the job. The sudden lack of income could cause people to be homeless. I could go on with page after page with example after example. There are a lot of possibilities. Just as there are many catastrophic events and major life changes that can lead to homelessness, there are great uh, awe-inspiring organizations out there who can step in and offer resourcing to help prevent transitional homelessness. One such organization is the United Way. If you are in King County, Washington State, a link to check out is www.uwkc.org. If you are outside of the county, you can go to the United Way website. United Way King County does a variety of things. For example, they are committed to racial equality, fighting against homelessness, helping students graduate, and help and helping keep families financially stable. A good informational website for the under-resourced or homeless in King County, Washington State, is the United Way of King County and the Millionaire Club Charity run a program called Jobs Connect. The organization helps homeless people find work. Another resourcing project Amazon has partnered with is Fair Start, helping people move out of homelessness and poverty through job training. Additionally, many areas throughout the world are instituting a 211 hotline for under-resourced assistance. 
picking up the phone or asking someone to assist you by calling 211 themselves or letting you use their phone can get you directly connected with services and, and uh, resources. Losing a loved one can be especially hard. I lost my father a few years ago. This subject can be very touchy and long, so I wouldn't go into too many details. I trust that there are people out there that have become homeless because of losing someone, family members or a family member, friend or spouse. If you are living in King County, Washington, the best thing to do if you are experiencing a crisis over losing a loved one or any other problem that you may be experiencing through the COVID-19 pandemic is a community information resource line at UW Medicine Bereavement Support Services, 1-866-427-4747. There are a few other groups in Seattle, Washington that offer support groups. It would be best to ask what the best support group for yourself would be. Number two, episodic homelessness. According to author Homer, episodic homelessness is defined as when they are having recurrent problems with housing. Often these individuals have seasonal, minimum wage income, or sporadic domestic situations that affect stable housing. Episodic homelessness is almost like transitional homelessness because it is possible to lose a seasonal job because it is only seasonal work. When that season ends, so does the job and there is no income coming in, unless they save a portion of their seasonal earnings and apply it to their unseasonal unemployment. Even then, they may have to get a temporary job to cover the rent. Another solution could be to go to college and get a certificate in an employment field that is in demand in their state. Once they've earned their certificate, they could be earning a higher than minimum wage. Number three, chronic homelessness. First, I want to say there are hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people that are experiencing chronic homelessness. If you are one of those people, I want to let you know that you are not alone. Many individuals, companies, and organizations are working hard to help end chronic homelessness in Seattle, Washington. One of those companies is the Starbucks Coffee Company. On their website is an article titled, Starbucks Expands Efforts to Support Seattle's Chronic Homelessness Crisis. This was written back in February of 2022. So just imagine where they are now and how many people they have helped. The story has a few bullet points that describe this effort. Bullet point number one, provides update on hometown efforts in the greater Seattle area to support those experiencing chronic homelessness by bolstering its commitment of nearly 500 K and programming and partnership throughout 2022. Bullet point number two, invest in new partnership for zero collaboration led by the King County Regional Homelessness Authority, KCRHA. Focus on drastically reducing homelessness in King County. Bullet point number three, Expand support to fund greater housing access locally and enters new partnership to increase dignified access to basic needs. Take a few minutes to look up this article. See footnote. The provided bullet points are only part of what Starbucks is doing. 
There are many other organizations, companies, and individuals out there doing other things for the chronic homelessness situation in Washington State or in your state or city. Chronic homelessness is defined from rednoseday.org website as an unaccompanied homeless individual with a disabling condition. One thing that is noticeable in the state of Washington is the number of people with some form of disability. This may include mental health conditions, addiction, or other debilitating conditions. Having these disabilities can harshly affect individuals from keeping a job, getting a higher paying job, or going to school. It is sad that chronic homelessness is happening in King County, Washington, and around the world. One day while riding a bus, I noticed a man in a wheelchair with no legs struggling to wheel himself up a steep hill. His struggle seemed horrifying, especially in Seattle, Washington, my own backyard. Number four, hidden homelessness. Lastly, hidden homelessness. Red Nose Day says individuals who live with others temporarily without a permanent home are considered hidden homelessness because it is unnoticed. This category is focused on people with friends and family they can turn to for shelter. However, not all people have that fortunate situation. Some people must tough it out on their own and get the help that they need to lift themselves up. In conclusion, like I mentioned in transitional homelessness, if you are living in King County, Washington and experiencing homelessness from experiencing a crisis or losing a loved one or any other problem that you may had experienced through the COVID-19 pandemic is a community information resource line at UW Medicine Bereavement Support Services, 1-866-427-4747. There are a few other groups in Seattle, Washington that offer support groups. It would be best to ask what the best support group for yourself would be. They should be able to direct you to the best option for you, or better yet, give you the help you need to succeed. Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13. Chapter 2. The first step to take when you're homeless and want to get out. There are so many people that have become homeless in different ways. There could be a limitless number of reasons for people being homeless. They may have gotten evicted from their apartment, a very close family member may have died, an addiction to drugs, a giving up on life, mental illness, a loss of employment. These are only a few of the many possibilities. The first step to take if you are suddenly homeless and don't know what to do is to find a shelter that best fits your needs. And if you don't know any shelter homes in your area, you can call 211. It is toll free and it connects you to a community resource specialist in your area. If possible, have some paper and something to write information down. If you don't, have that you can go to a public library which is free you can use their computers 
they may have pencils, pens, and paper for you to use. Once you get the materials, you can write down your needs, not your wants. You may want to get your place back. You may want a million dollars. You may want a pack of cigarettes or some weed to smoke. But do you absolutely need these things? You absolutely need food, water, and shelter. So you should get information about where to go to sign up for a shelter. After you get to a shelter and somewhat organized, check with shelter staff to see if they have programs to get you housed. This is the critical step towards ending your homelessness. Chapter 3, How to Get a Job In this chapter, I will explain ways of how to get a job if you don't currently have one and don't know what to do. I will show you some resume samples for how a resume is supposed to look. I will explain to you how to write a job description and what it is. And lastly, I will express to you all the knowledge I have gained personally through an interview with a work source specialist. For whoever is reading this book, I want to tell you up front to please do the extra research for yourself. This chapter is only a guide for you. This chapter will give you directions, but what is required from you is to put in the footwork, research further, make phone calls, and take action, like going to a work source building. All it takes is a simple Google on your cell phone, or if you don't have a cell phone, you can use computers at a library. See footnote for site address. Work source. What is it? As they state on their website, WorkSource is a statewide partnership of state, local, and nonprofit agencies that provide an array of employment and training services to job seekers and employers in Washington. On WorkSource's website, there are two search boxes. One allows you to search by title, keyword, or job number, which allows you to search for any type of job you're interested in. The second search box allows you to choose where. If you are in another state, you can type in the city and state in this second box. Sign up for their services on WorkSource's website and you'll even get notifications. Also, you can go to the WorkSource building to get assistance from an employment specialist. Just to let you know, if you don't have a permanent address, you can use a friends, family, members, religions, or social organizations address. Check with them first. If you're in a shelter home, the shelter home may also allow you to use their address. I'll cover this more in chapter five under the mail section. Getting a private mailbox will be a good option if you have and can afford it. You can pay for some mailboxes one month, two months, three months, or a year in advance. I would suggest doing three months or a year when renting a private mailbox because it gives you an address. Next, I will show you how a few different resumes look and the information in each one. You could pause the audio so you can take time to look through the resumes. Now for some examples of general job descriptions in bullet point style, which does a job description mean? A job description is a written narrative that describes the general tasks or other related duties and responsibilities of a position. For example, if you were a day laborer, some job description bullet points you could use would be clean up work sites from hazardous or obsolete material assist welders, carpenters, painters, or other tradespeople on site, handle and transport material, cement and equipment, drills and grinders, use power tools and machinery, forklifts when needed, 
follow instructions from supervisors to perform manual labor tasks, digging, stacking of goods. Put up warning signs, signposts, cones for vehicles and passerby. Help with setting up and transferring temporary structures. Report issues with equipment or in unsafe conditions. Cleaning and preparing construction sites. Loading and unloading materials and equipment. Building and taking down scaffolding and temporary structures. Digging trenches, compacting earth, and backfilling holes. Operating and tending machinery and heavy equipment following instructions from supervisors and implementing construction plans, assisting skilled tradespeople in their duties. I was once in an interview with an employment specialist and the information that was shared in that interview was especially revealed to this discussion. There was a lot of being said during the interview. I have tried to condense the information and put it all simple and short as possible. I really do believe this would be a great benefit of knowledge for you as you read through the answers given to me. Please take some time to understand everything. For instance, if there is something that stands out, please use it. Do it by searching where places are and go there or call them. Now I'm going to get to the questions that were asked during my interview and the questions that were provided. There are a total of six questions. Question number one. If you were off work and you came across a homeless person and that homeless person says, I need a job for money, what would you advise that person? Interviewee, answer, Go to work source or depending on skills that connect with a labor union. Question number two, is there any required information needed to sign up for work source? Interviewee, answer, ID and social security card. Question number three, do you have any specific programs for a person that's homeless seeking employment? Interviewee, answer, no, but we help with resumes and we treat everyone equally. Question number four, do you have people here at WorkSource that can help with resumes and finding the best job for a person? Interviewee answer, yes. They will need some work history, contact information, for instance, phone number, address, email address. Question number five, can you please explain to me how the whole process works from the time an unemployed person enters the door? Interviewee answer, they would talk to an employment specialist. We would then ask them questions so that we can get to their specific goals. If they have a resume, it can take maybe one hour or two, but if they don't, it could take several hours. It all depends on how many people are here how many specialists we have available. Question number six, do you have any more advice you would like to share for a person that is homeless? Interview we answer, well, to get more stability, getting on any state services, such as help from the state, DSHS, Department of Social and Health Services, HUD, HUD, Exchange, United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, Coalition for the Homeless, etc. Another option is high turnover jobs. They will most likely hire you very quickly because they need people. Facebook side gigs, maybe Craigslist. Also, if someone is struggling with homelessness, I would suggest getting enrolled in a school because they can use the gym, the shower, do homework inside a building. However, they must maintain a good or at least average grade point average. This is important because some programs may require a good GPA grade point average to be accepted into any programs that can aid a homeless student. Lastly, when you 
become a student. Lastly, when you become a student, it can work towards a positive career and can work on a work study program or work full time in school part time. Prayer. Here is a good personal prayer. Dear Jehovah God, please give me the strength and courage I need to proceed in getting a job. I pray I may get out of homelessness, and I pray that all the people that are homeless may gain the strength to make their way out too. I love you so much with all my heart, in the name of Jesus Christ's name, amen. Chapter 4. How to get help if you have a drug problem. First off, what I want to say to you is, I am sorry that you're going through this situation. And always remember, you are not alone. What I will need from you is action. Taking action if you want to stop doing drugs and get clean. So that you can focus on getting your life in order. I will first explain to you ways that you can utilize a phone. If you are at a shelter home, you can most likely use their phone. You can check out Lifeline phone services at 1-800-234-9473 for their support center. They can also be reached by email at lifelinesupport at usac.org. If you don't have any other options, a good idea is to use a friend's phone or religious building's phone to make phone calls. Now I'm going to get to the part where you can get help with having a drug problem. First, you must admit that you have one and what to get off whatever you are doing. Next step is to continue reading. In this chapter, I will go over four topics, and these topics are how to get immediate help, does treatment work, how can families and communities support people in recovery, and how do you pay for treatment? How do you get immediate help? To get free referrals in Washington State for treatment and recovery resources, and 24-hour emotional support, contact Washington Recovery Helpline. Phone, 1-866-789-1511. Teen Link Helpline for Teens. Phone, 866-833-6546. Does treatment work? Yes. Research shows that treatment for substance use disorders works to reduce and stop use and the negative consequences. Addiction is a serious disease that only harms individuals and families, but the entire community. The good news is that treatment and recovery programs have provided hope, healing, and a new life for to thousands of people in the state of Washington across the nation. Treatment also saves public spending on emergency medical care, unemployment, and criminal justice. Like any chronic health condition, early and ongoing treatment and recovery support are important for long-term health. HCA, state health care access agencies, invest in treatment services that are evidence services that are evidence-based and delivered by certified treatment agencies. Certified agencies meet established standards for providing effective services, which includes individual treatment plans to make specific needs. Specialized treatment services are available for adolescents pregnant and parenting individuals and their children, members of minority populations and those with disabilities. How can families and communities support people in recovery? 
First, it's important to understand substance use disorders and treat it with the same urgency as any other chronic and disabling disease. Anyone can develop a substance use disorder, but some people are at higher risk, such as those with family history and people who began using alcohol or other drugs before their bodies and brains are developed. Next, help loved ones see that they need help, hold them accountable, and support them throughout their treatment. How do you pay for treatment? Treatment for substance use disorders is covered in all private and employer-sponsored health plans under the Affordable Care Act. If you are enrolled in Medicaid's Washington Apple Health, you can contact a treatment agency directly for setting up your care. You do not need a referral from your managed care plan because this type of health care is funded directly by Medicaid. If you are low income and need help paying for treatment, apply for Apple Health Washington Health Plan Finder. This is the website www.wahealthplanfinder.org. Chapter 5 How to Survive Sleeping in Your Car. The first thing I want you to understand is that sleeping in your car can be a bit of a challenge. You must keep in mind that depending on how long you're planning on sleeping in your car and location, there are four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Winter is the utmost harsh because of the cold. And again, this all depends on what location you're located at. Places like Arizona or California, just to name a couple, don't have to worry so much about the winter weather. I want to tell you what I believe to be the top number one thing to have if you are planning to sleep in your car. This is from my own experience. There are more things that you could add to it later depending on where you're located and the type of vehicle you currently have. One of the most important things you should be aware of, from my experience, is your safety. Keep in mind that a vehicle is a gas machine. It is designed to get you from point A to point B. It is not designed for you to sleep and live in. With that in mind, leaving your car running while sleeping is dangerous because carbon monoxide can enter your vehicle's interior through cracks vents, your windows, and even your engine. So what is CO, carbon monoxide? It is a colorless and odorless gas found where fuel is burned. With that being said, you wouldn't smell it even exposed to it. Scary, huh? Solutions for this problem. Turn the engine off while sleeping in your car. Get a carbon monoxide detector for your car. Get your exhaust system checked or inspected. You can look on Amazon.com for a carbon monoxide detector for your car. There are other sources where you can find a carbon monoxide detector, but I suggest Amazon.com. Lastly, when you have your engine off, it is best to slightly crack the window in your car. By doing this, you add in fresh air, and it could help with cold temperatures in the brutal winter. The website GetJerry.com has an informative article titled, Can You Sleep in Your Car With The Windows Up? The article states that sleeping with the windows up can cause excess moisture from your breath. This will cause your body to feel colder, which isn't ideal in the winter. As a result, you may want to crack the window a half an inch or an inch to aid in circulation and stay warmer. Okay, that is enough of all the fun stuff. 
Now I'm going to get into some of the other important things you should do when sleeping and living out of your vehicle. Storage unit. If you are leaving your home and are forced to sleep in your car, maybe just until you get your mind in order and figure out where to go for shelter, one of the best things you can do is to get a storage unit. It will be best to get a storage unit that you have 24 access to. This is because you may need things throughout the night or in the morning. This also could be good for you if you have a crazy work schedule. If you have a clean driving record in a newer car, maybe you could work for Lyft, Uber, etc. Having a storage unit would be good for these types of jobs because you won't have all of your possessions in the back of your seat of your vehicle. Food. Food is very important for your health. However, the type of food you put in you is what really counts. An article I came across when I was researching the best foods to keep in your car was an article titled, Nutritious Food to Keep in Your Car at All Times. It recommended these seven items, bottle of water, trail mix, meat jerky, granola energy bars, dried fruit, nuts and seeds, canned foods. Fast food and eating out at restaurants are another option, but it can be expensive and unhealthy. Eating fast food every day could likely result in gaining a lot of weight and could be very unhealthy. There will probably be times when you go through the drive through at fast food restaurants and you're always sitting down. You're not moving in, therefore, you run the risk of weight gain. Believe me, I learned my lesson when I started to gain a lot of weight eating at fast food restaurants and always sitting down in my car. Mail. The best place for your mail could be a family's house, such as your mother or father's house. Or if you have other family members like your aunt or uncle that could help you with your mail. Another option, if you don't want to go to the family route, is to get a private mailbox. The great thing about having a private mailbox is that some places you can pay three, six, or even a year in advance. Having a private mailbox can help you appear to be someone with a real address. This could be very beneficial for you if you need a job and are applying for one. Also, this could help you with driver's license, state ID cards, car insurance, and as I mentioned before, job applications and resumes. You can also check with some agencies for some example shelter homes, safe lots for parking your car, or a day center and see if they allow you to list their address as yours. If all these options fail, your best bet would probably be to call 211 and ask for any agencies in your area that could possibly help you with your address and mailing needs. Protection. What I mean by protection is something to protect yourself with when sleeping in your car. To start, whenever you find a nice spot that you trust is the right spot for you, always prepare an escape route in case you may have to start your engine up and take off. On www.sleepbubble.com, they suggest you sleep in the driver's seat of your car with your seatbelt on. In my opinion, I believe you should keep a few items with you, especially for women that are sleeping in their cars. I'm going to give you a list of items. However, please know your state laws may not consider everything on this list as legal. So be sure to check your local guidelines. These are my top recommendations for protection items. 
these are my top recommendations for protection items. Taser. For someone that is several feet away from you and you need to defend yourself, it has projectile prongs that attach to its target up to 15 feet away. Stun gun. This device will give a painful shock to a person that is close up and trying to harm you. Knife. Pepper spray. As I did some research on this topic, I came across an article on the survivalmob.com website called Safety Tips for Women Living in Cars, How to Make it Work. The article suggests that it would be best if you have the following items on hand for your protection and safety. Air horn, stun gun, knife, pepper spray, dog spray, Kubaton, tactical pin, tactical flashlight, keys, firearm, taking a self-defense course, location. In my opinion, out of the list of places where you should park your vehicle, truck stops are at the top of the list. This is a good place to park because they are open 24 hours a day. They offer food, bathroom, shower, and Wi-Fi depending on which truck stop you go to. I came across this blog on www.coralablanket.com. The title of it is 13 Safe Places to Sleep in Your Car for Free. I am not going to give you all 13 of the places they believe are the best locations because I do not agree with everything on their list. Though the list is useful and worth reading though. What I have are 9 locations where I believe it would be best for you to park your vehicle. Please keep in mind that you must do some research yourself to figure out what the laws and rules and regulations are when parking at some of these locations that I am about to share with you. Please be mindful of signs stating no overnight parking, no trespassing, no parking, etc. Truck stops, gym, specifically 24 hours. Grocery store, open 24 hours. Walmart, if possible. Apartment complex, only if safe. Police stations, safe parking lots, religious buildings, rest stops. If you are experiencing homelessness and sleeping in your car, please call 211 for assistance with finding a safe parking lot in your area available programs for you to sleep in a safe parking lot personal hygiene this topic is one of the most important things when living in your car besides food taking care of yourself showering grooming Trimming your fingernails and toenails and brushing your teeth is very important. You at least want to take care of that on a regular basis. Then find a dentist, a doctor for regular checkups and yearly physicals. If you don't have insurance, you can obtain it through Obamacareplans.com or if you want to speak with an agent, you can call one 855 532 Speaking to an agent can help you with information you have to ask and possibly even ask you some questions to get you approved for health and dental insurance. From my own experience, having a backpack for personal hygiene is essential. When you have a backpack, you may need to brush your teeth using a public bathroom, even the gym, even a community center in your area. This way, everything you would need will be in your bag. For instance, a rag, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, deodorant, etc. All this is placed into a plastic bag or sandwich bag and placed inside your backpack. I came across some important information from another article from the survivalmom.com website that covers more of this The title of this article is How to Live Out of Your Car 
solid advice from people who made it work. I'm going to mix information from myself and this article in bullet points for places to go and ideas to take care of your essential needs. For example, your personal hygiene, a community center. If you do a little bit of searching around, there could be places that offer free showers. There also may be some places that charge to use their showers. Keep that in mind. 24 hour gym. If you have a good job and some money to spare, a 24 hour gym would be one of the best ideas for showering, grooming, brushing your teeth, etc. You could sleep in their parking lot and before work, go inside to work out if you want and shower, brush your teeth, etc. Truck stops. Again, if you have extra cash, you will have to pay, but you will get a nice warm shower. In conclusion, sleeping in your car has its challenges and perks. Overall, it will be best to plan to sleep in your car for the short, not long term. This chapter was designed to make things easier for you if sleeping in your car is your only option. The safest place would be a shelter home because there you will have resources and food. Also, there are parking lots that may provide temporary shelter for you to sleep in your car. This could also be a safer route because they may have showers, security, and some resources as well. Chapter six. How to survive sleeping in a tent. First, I want to advise you that if you're thinking about sleeping in a tent, go to a tent city if there is one nearby you. I'm going to go into detail about this, but I want to mention that this information is for Washingtonians. If you live in another state that rules and information may be different, but you could take away some of this information and apply it towards your tent survival. Wherever you're located, you could have tent cities nearby. You would never know this if you did not search for your city's sites for tent cities if you have one. If you don't have one, I would advise you to call 211 to find out where the nearest shelter is to you. Tent cities are probably the safest route if you decide to sleep in a tent if you're homeless. Tent cities provide meals, security, and most likely resources. This is a place where you can stay for a temporary period, often 90 days or more. With about 100 residents in a tent city, therefore, it will be best to be around people in the same situation as you are and be governed by rules. What I mean by that is there are local police that make regular walkthroughs in most tent cities. Everyone that has been accepted into a tent city knows they must follow the rules or they will have to leave. Additionally, someone that has been accepted into a tent city usually had to do a background check to qualify. If you have more questions about a tent city, such as qualifications, etc., you can check out frequently asked questions on a website at www.sharewheel.org slash tentcityfaqs. Next, let's talk about how to survive sleeping in a tent. If all else fails and this is what you believe is the best option. Again, uh, sleeping in a car or anywhere really there are four seasons spring summer fall and winter you must think about how you can best prepare yourself for each season at night when you are ready to sleep you must understand that it gets colder during nighttime and spring is probably cool Summer, a little cool. Fall, probably cold. Winter, super cold, depending on where you live. 
it would be a good idea to dress warmly at night and dress extra warmly during the fall and winter time. I really hope that you're not outside in a tent in fall and winter. Even sleeping with all your clothes on, sleeping on Earth's ground will pull all heat out of your body. I suggest the best thing to do is get a wooden pallet or something similar to put under your tent so that you won't be directly on the ground. Additionally, here's a list of most important essential items needed for sleeping in a tent. This list could help you if you qualify for Tent City or want to go to it alone independently. Tent sleeping bags, sleeping pads, camping pillow, headlamps or flashlights and extra batteries, pepper spray or stun gun. Legal in Washington state, but you may have to check your local laws if you're out of state. Basic items needed. Water bottles, socks, soft granola or cereal bar, fruit snack or applesauce cups, crackers with peanut butter or cheese, gift certificate to fast food, hand wipes, pack of Kleenex, sunscreen, maxi pads, toothbrush and toothpaste, nail clippers, band-aids, chapstick, comb or small brush, mints, cough drops, or gum. Note of encouragement. In conclusion, I do not advise you to sleep in a tent if there are any other options. I trust the best thing for you to do is figure out what your needs are. And after you've done that, call 211 to get information on where You could go to temporarily sleep, such as a shelter home. Living or sleeping in a tent can be tricky because you must consider and ask yourself these questions. Where am I going to store my tent during the busy day? Because there are people out there that uh, will steal your stuff and your tent. If I don't qualify for Tent City, where am I going to sleep that will be safe? Do I really feel like setting up my tent every time I need to sleep? Prayer. Here is a good personal prayer. Dear Jehovah God, please give me the strength and courage I need to survive sleeping in my tent. I understand that there may be people in another country that may have it worse than what I have. I pray that this may be temporarily because I am currently homeless. And I pray that all the people that are homeless and sleeping in tents and the less fortunate people around the whole world may gain the strength to make a way out too. I love you so much with all my heart in the name of jesus christ's name amen chapter seven what can upper and middle class people do to help fight this homeless problem we sometimes think that poverty is only being hungry naked and homeless the poverty of being unwanted unloved and uncared for is the greatest poverty. We must start in our own homes to remedy this kind of poverty. Mother Teresa. I think no person should be homeless if we can have public structures and public policy to allow for people to have homes and food and lead a dignified life in the United States. Alexandra Cortez. 
most people never really sat down and got to know a homeless person. Ron Hall. Better resourced upper and middle class people could buy large plots of land for homeless people. And they could partner with religious and nonprofit organizations to build many homes regulated and controlled by these agencies. Another possible idea to help fight this homeless problem in Washington state and around the world is if more individuals and organizations fighting homelessness could all get together as one. When they get together as one, they could call their program or organization SOLVE, S-O-L-V-E, Sleep On Location Vagabonding Ended. SOLVE organization could be a worldwide organization with its main focus to provide housing for the vagabond homeless people around the world. A bullet point list of ideas could complete this magnificent program. Operate like a hierarchy, structure system similar to a Fortune 500 company. Have merchandise and clothing for joined members. Each member pays a certain percentage of their pay to support Solve organization. Religious services will be available to anyone in need. Resources of any topic will be available to anyone in this program. Families, men, women, they, them, theirs, and people with disabilities will be, will be welcome in SOLVE program. Classic composers, music like Samuel Coleridge Taylor, Joseph Bonalog, Chevalier de St. George, Mozart, Julius Eastman, just to name a few, will always be playing low in the background inside the land where homeless people will be living. Chapter 8 Inspirational Words Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Dale Carnegie Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Thomas Edison It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Confucius Never give up, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Harriet Bleacher Stowe You just can't beat the person who won't give up, Babe Ruth. There is no failure except in no longer trying. Albert Hubbard. It always seems impossible until it's done. Nelson Mandela. Winners never quit and quitters never win. Vince Lombardi. How long should you try until Jim Rohn? Successful men and women keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. Comrade Hilton. You just never give up. You do a task to the best of your abilities and beyond. Debbie Reynolds. It's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. Albert Einstein. Failure is only the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Henry Ford. When you give up on life, never give up on yourself because there is so much for you to keep on giving. Oprah Winfrey. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Maya Angelou. Keep your face always toward the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Walt Whitmore. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. Dolly Payton. 
if you can do what you do best and be happy, you're further along in life than most people. Leonardo DiCaprio. We must accept fight night disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Martin Luther King Jr. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you figured out why. Mark Twain. However difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. Stephen Hawking. Some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen. Others make it happen. Michael Jordan. Nothing is impossible. Even the word itself says, I'm possible. Audrey Hepburn. It's never too late. Never too late to start over. Never too late to be happy. Jane Fonda. If you want to fly, give up everything that weighs you down. Buddha. I was 21 and homeless. Such a broken, lost woman. Licky Lee. I went from broke and homeless, sleeping on couches. Kalani. I just feel like I influence people because I'm like, I was practically homeless. Cardi B. Starbucks is the last public space with chairs. It's a shower for homeless people. Mike Berbiglia. To anyone who is homeless, I say, find a home. Ben or Cree. I was homeless and I was in San Diego and I started singing in a local coffee shop and people started coming to hear me sing. Jewel. Chapter 9. My ideas on solving homelessness. One idea I have is to include the top Fortune 500 companies in solving the homelessness happening in Washington State and around the world. Fortune 500 companies like Walmart, Amazon, ExxonMobil, Apple, United Health Group, CVS Health, Berkshire Hathaway, Alphabet, and McKesson, just to name a few, could get together to develop a program for homeless. They could work on resourcing initiative like free education that will guarantee housing while they are studying and employment after completion. All courses could even benefit the company. After completion of school, the individual could get all the repetitive, repetitious AI creation and building R&D department. Technical support representative work available as a starting point. Each job will have health insurance, dental, vision, and life insurance. That way they could take all their benefits and use them to better themselves and eradicate their homelessness, mental, and health situations. Every person that will be a part of one of the Fortune 500 companies eradicating the homelessness program will be assigned a company case worker to assist them like a life coach to check in with them every day to make sure they are on track with everything. Perhaps even be their tutor for their courses while helping the homeless people stay on track. A great name to call this magnificent program is HOME. H-O-M-E. Help outcast men and women exist. Prayer. Here is a good prayer. Dear Jehovah God, please give me the strength and courage I need to help the unfortunate homeless people. I pray that this book will get into the hands of merciful people as well as into the hands of homeless people. I pray one day I will look upon this land and see that there is no more homelessness around me. And I pray that I may continue to help inspire, encourage, love, care for all the people that are homeless. I pray for all the little kind things that happen to me. I will appreciate them, hold them, 
cherish them, and with all my heart be grateful for them. I pray for all people who are experiencing hardship that they may gain the strength to make a way out to. I love you so much, Lord, with all my heart, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.